Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 34 of Jenna and Millie, where a Gen Xer and a millennial share the strength-based perspective through which they view the world. We are your hosts, Allison and Thess. Hi, everybody. We're so excited to be with you guys again today. This will probably, you'll probably hear this shortly after our last episode, 43. Um, Can you believe that? Out. This is 34. This is 34. It's a little bit insane that we've been able to stay disciplined long enough. <laughs> discipline being my 34 out of 34. Um, but also that people wanted to listen to us. <laughs> you know, what's interesting is discipline is low for you and it's low for me. But yet at the same time, we're pretty good about routine yeah. and knowing what we need. Yep. And I mm. just had a conversation um with Roseanne about this yesterday when we were chatting. Roseanne's going to be, yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> so. to be featuring. February is going to be my favorite month of Mentor Webinar Academies, um, but I get to feature Roseanne Niesfeld. And we were, she was gone. She was traveling for three weeks. And she said, you know, I love traveling. She said, it's always good to, to be home. And I was thinking about how when I am in deep, when I'm traveling for work, whatever it is, it's my excuse generator hmm. oh I'm not sleeping in my same bed I didn't sleep as well so I'm not gonna work out today and if I don't have my exercise in the morning then I make bad food choices it's just like a set up for disaster okay. but it's my excuse maker and so I I like to believe and for those of you that watch Grace and Frankie oh I love that show so much I want to be Frankie but I'm a lot like Grace and what I would like to be able to acknowledge at 44 years of age is that it is okay to be me. Yeah. yeah. So I am a gypsy soul. I, I truly believe that's who I am. But I really need structure. And I really like clean sheets. And I really like the same kind of things to happen every day because that seems to really feed me. Okay, so I'm going to take us off a little bit on a similar topic to illustrate this. Um, because my argument is that we tend to put character in binary structures, right? Good, bad, hippie, type A, yes. right? We tend to, like, believe that people live oh, in You are so right. right. You are right? so wise. And so a, an illustration of this, which you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, of course, um, is uh, I have been, I reread all the Harry Potter series. Um, in the month of January, and I've been, um, and I'm excited for this upcoming Harry Potter movie marathon me and my friend are doing, and um, in the midst of that, I've been listening to this podcast about Harry Potter, and they've been going through, like, the symbolism of it, and the world of it, and they've been doing deep dives into, into character development, and one of the things they keep talking about is that there are all these arguments about, like, okay, whether or not, for instance, Harry Potter is um, a nerd or a jock, whether or not Snape is good or evil, right? Like, these people that you have no frame of reference for. No. This is more for anyone. I'm like, this is to illustrate this, right? And so I should the probably entire, read it. The entire time in the series, reading it or watching it, you come to believe that this professor, Snape, is evil the whole time. It is only on his dying breath when he bequeaths a memory to Harry in this this magical world you can like take out your memories and other people can see them as you experience them and he goes through and he sees that his entire life state has been protecting him and he's been getting close to the enemy he's become the enemy's most trusted advisor in an effort to protect him and you don't see it until like the last 30 pages of the book when he's dying and so it's this whole idea of you can see it when you go back and there are small instances, but for the most part, you spend the whole time believing he's evil, right? It's because he doesn't fit the evil good binary that we have, right? The good and evil. Um, the exact same kind of illustration for so many. You can pick any character. Absolutely. Any person, right? Mm -hmm. But we tend to fit character is this or this, right? You are type A or you are type B, right? You are... Um, uh, super disciplined or you're not you're very good with the flow and that's what actually I love about strengths is this is not where we intended the conversation to go today awesome. but I love where we're going with it um, <laughs> right is strengths is that there are no opposite strengths right and there are only least likely pairs but you've seen a lot of people with their least likely pairs in their top five Jillian is a great example yep. of our awesome friend at Yale Jillian has both Wu and Relator in her top five, which are least likely pairs. Mm -hmm. Relator is about close circles of trusted friends. Mm -hmm. Wu is about expanding your social circle. For her, it looks like a close friend 
you know, close group of friends while continuing to make new friends, right? right? And so that's what's awesome about strengths is that there are no opposites, but we just have such a mindset of you are this or this, right? So I love that you're coming to this self-awareness of I really do have like a gypsy spirit, a gypsy heart, but I need structure in yeah. my life to be okay. And that that's okay. Yeah. And how, how sad is it that I have to be 44 to start figuring out mm -hmm. that life does not work in binary terms. Yep. It just doesn't. It doesn't. And I know and believe that, but yet at the same time for my own self-awareness, which I am a big believer of self-awareness is tremendously underrated, mm -hmm. but that I had to choose between one or the other. I remember very early on, um, Lauren and Sean's dad and I um, met in high school. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was forever talking about how I was born in the wrong generation. I love all of the music from the 60s and the 70s. And I should have been, you know, a roadie, a groupie. I should have been someone who was with the band. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, I will never forget it. He said, you like showers and clean hair. <laughs> like, no. I get, I get what you are saying, else of it. Uh, no. And in my head, I was thinking, certainly there is a group that travels with the band that goes to nice hotels. Like they all aren't all just camping in tents, right? And I remember very, dis and that's a very early memory for me. I mean, that's like 18 years old mm -hmm. for me to think, but why can't I be a little bit of both. Right. And then I think about all the years of our early married years when we were a young family in a, a community where we were business owners and everybody wanted me to fit into right. this binary. That you will be this. You can't be a career person and a stay-at-home mom. No, absolutely not. You can't be um, a professional and um, very invested in your own career and also run a business with your spouse. Like you have to do one or the other. And I fell into that trap a lot. Yeah. And I think one of the joys of um, the opportunity that I had to recreate life and yeah. to get a second chance was for me to say, um, this is who I am actually. Yeah. And but every single year as I look in the year ahead and I reflect the awesome thing about having a January birthday, which also yes. may be the thing about having a birthday around this time of year for both of us mm -hmm. is we get to reflect yep. and we get to look ahead. Yep. So, and that's why I love New Year's Eve. I reflect on where my growth has come, you know, where, where those moments. And then I also look ahead to think, you know, what do I want to be intentional about this year? Mm -hmm. So for me to look back and think, wow, you, you really got to know yourself this year. I'm, that was the year of 43. 43. Yeah. I wish I would have started this so much sooner, this mm -hmm. deeper dive into who I am and owning it and saying that I'm okay. Um, today I'm wearing a poncho <laughs> that I guarantee when my daughter sees this, it's also matched with a mustard shirt that doesn't really match, but I was going for different color tones. When she sees this, she's going to say, what is that? And my response is going to be, I like it. I wanted to wear it. I like it. I love it. I oh. freeze sometimes in my little office space, so I like to wear layers. Mm -hmm. But also, I love this because I got this at um, a boutique in Kozad that's no longer open. I have great memories about my strengths time that I was doing training out there. Mm -hmm. And so when I see and experience this, that triggers a memory for me. I love it. And so I like it. And it's okay for me to say, yeah. This is fine. I just stand up for that. I had a great conversation with the gal who um, at church got I got connected with. I kind of knew of her and knew her, but never really had a conversation with her. And she went to um, out for coffee with one of my good friends. And, um, and she had said, you have to connect with Tess because you have so much of a shared experience. She's been wrestling with some really heavy chronic illness for a really long time. And so my friend was like, you got to reach out to her. Tess has dealt with this her whole life. And one of the big things that came out of that, you know, I encouraged her that there are so many times where you question faith and question God and all these things throughout it. But the big thing is you have to be your own advocate. Absolutely. Right? Okay, Allie, you have to be your own advocate. You have to stand up and say, I like it, no matter how self-assured your daughter is, because you know she's really self-assured. <laughs> because it's you, right? It's 
That is so funny because I was thinking, yes, you have to advocate for yourself. Yes, Tess. It's about you. That's the no reason to wrap it up. It's because you have to advocate uh-huh. for yourself. It's a forever um, progress and right. process and growth mm-hmm. for me. I um, got a wonderful email from a coordinator who I recently um, we went through new mentor training certification, and I asked them to you know share their bucket drop as I always do. Yeah. You know, here's a bucket drop, and think about someone you know that you could reach out to. Yeah. The day before we presented at um, yeah. National Mentoring Summit. She emailed me and really um, praised mm-hmm. the day, the time that was spent, and the way that I teach and train. And I emailed her back and told her how much that meant to me because I have this little this little friend that pops up, mm-hmm. and um, her name is Self Doubt. Yeah, and she has a really, really great way of showing up at the worst of times. And there are a lot of people who might listen to this and might know one side of me, which is uh, presentation mode, um, in full woo communication. And you would have no idea the self-doubt talk that happens all the time for me. And so I thanked her because I said, my friend self-doubt showed up. And I just said, hey, get lost. I'm reading this awesome email from someone who said, Thank you for being exactly as you are. And I thought about grown up ish me needing to hear that in the 9,000 mentees yeah. that every time a mentor shows up, every single time it matters. Yeah. And the way that we shine light on what is good and right about our mentees, yeah. the way that we show them that they matter and that we look forward to seeing them. Mm-hmm. That, that's huge. Yeah. Because maybe they have a friend named self-doubt who shows up. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they have a friend called criticism. Or maybe they have a friend called shame. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they have a friend called pressure. And sometimes, right, the only way to dull those voices is to have other people speak into us, right? Mm-hmm. So the strength blog I wrote um, for this past week was about... <laughs> oh, sorry, go on. Don't you read the blog you started and made me take over? No, I volunteered to take over, but um, that's okay. Sorry. Um, oh, I haven't read it so yet. Right right now. I'm sorry. I, have to be I haven't read it yet. Thing. No, I am thoughtful about when I read things. No, it was, um, it was just the exercise of the, um, the report, signature theme report, and how any words and phrases and hand it over to someone but I was reminded of this idea of going back to the basics right, right. and how oftentimes we need to go back um, to where we started because that's such a great opportunity for growth and to remember where we've came come from number one but then also the part of hands it over to someone close to you dulls that inner critic right, right. and they literally were like we can be our own worst critics right and we can't even see our strengths clearly most mm-hmm. of the time so we need other people to be spotting them within us and that's an important not only understanding the fundamentals and sometimes needing them to go back to the basics but having other voices speak into our lives about our strengths are two huge huge components of development and without it you won't get to go as far you won't get to learn as much about yourself if you don't have those elements in place i also think what is the um the loss of time and energy spent for me to pretend that I don't still have self-doubt. Mm-hmm. Because you know, putting up a front that is, I am confident, is, a, is baloney. Yeah. That is not, that's just not the truth. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, when I think about my mentee, and I think about mentees I've had in the past, I hope that they feel like they can be 100% who they are, mm-hmm. at least during the time that they're sitting across from me. Yeah, that's good. Because... I'm sure that a lot of their day is spent trying to project, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm confident, I got this. I think a lot of us spend a lot of time that way. And I I just think there's a lot of value in being real. So for me, I just trained this new coordinator. Yeah. And for me, I think it was important for me to say, I'm not always confident in training. Yeah. I am not always good at it. Sometimes I'm scared to death. And I have an inner critic that doesn't shut up. Mm-hmm. I thought that was important because I, I think sometimes because I've practiced a lot, it comes across as if it's very polished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that I get the chance to practice probably more than most. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so on that note, so on that note yes. I was thinking of worth, yes. which just so happens to be my word of the year. Yes. Okay, tell me a little bit about it. How um, 
first I was kind of set on less. And because I was thinking about, I really want to be conscientious about spending this year. Um, I really want to be conscientious about how I spend my time and energy. So I was thinking about doing less, spending less, spending less energy in wasteful ways. And then that word just, ugh, it wasn't sitting right with me. And I kind of um, ruminated on it a little bit and let it marinate. And when I would write it, I was like, I just kept coming up with, that feels icky. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So somehow, and I'm not exactly sure, I started thinking about it's actually more about more Mm -hmm. in intention, and that falls onto worth. So what's it worth? Mm -hmm. Also, I know my worth and value. I remind other people of their worth and value. Who is worthy of you? One of my favorite questions Mm -hmm. that Jolene posed to me many years ago. But then also to think about, is it worth it? Mm. Is it worth it? Is that chocolate chip cookie worth it? When it comes to, I mean, it just comes down to simple science of caloric intake sometimes, (laughs) but also energy intake. So is that anger, frustration, um, disconnect, disappointment worth vocalizing? Mm. Is the joy, contentment, appreciation, love worth vocalizing Mm -hmm. so i just kept coming back to worth and i'm kind of loving the ways it's um all the synchronicity in the world that keeps popping up yeah amazingly when tess and i do not discuss our word of the year it's not that we like intentionally don't no it's not like it's surprise right like oh let's ruin it we can come back together right Mm -mm. So, but uh, Steph was in the office, our coworker, um, Steph Kowalczyk, and she was saying, we were talking about something, and Steph was like, oh my gosh, that's like your word of the year, for the year, right, Allie Worth? And and then she connected this, that both of our words, because she had heard about both of our words, are so, so similar. So I felt almost the exact same processing that you felt at the end of 2018 to, um, be very conscious of how I spend my time, how I spend my money, what words come out of my mouth, what thoughts I let sit in my in my mind. Um, and so my, and I actually had a hard time figuring out the word as well. And so one of my, this is so crazy, one of my... Um, is it really? Yeah. It's 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 crazy. Crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> but also we're <laughs> such different people. And I know. All the time. I know. So it's so weird that we like came to the very, very similar intention. But uh, so one of my good friends and I kind of pick her brain a lot. Um, she's our master's in clinical mental health counseling. So I said, okay, help me just process this. I need to get to the root of what I actually want to do this year. Right. So this is everything. And it was all for me from, from a faith perspective about, um, how I, I went on this retreat in November and it was very much about that we were reflecting back on the whole year and they go based on the liturgical year. So that starts at Lent um, was kind of what this is based on. But I go calendar year slash birthday year because my birthday year starts the day after the calendar year conveniently. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I was in on this retreat. We had to think back through the whole last year. We had to bring our calendars with us, um, you know, which I had it on my phone, but I did not want to bring my phone. So I spent the whole night before printing out and writing out everything I did <laughs> for the last year and the year ahead. Right? Couldn't you just take in your Atlas Almanac journal? Oh, I could have for sure. You're right. But I don't write everything down. And then I wanted it at a macro level, so I wasn't having to flip through. So I did a month at a time and, and color coded, of course. But um, <laughs> So we had to reflect back on times of consolation and desolation, times we're moving towards God or away from God. And um, and during those, we kind of looked for, in the movements towards God, what was it about those things that allowed us to move in that way, and, and vice versa, right? What was it about the moments of desolation that brought us away from God? Like, what were we doing? Were there any patterns? And they noticed this pattern in my life, which probably comes from the low discipline I have, right, of... Um, 
making in the low future state I have, right? And it's good to know our low, right? To know our limitations sometimes, although we need to focus on our top. But for me, it was, it just clicked immediately that I tend to make, in, in the culture we live in, that I make short-term choices that are gratifying in the moment at the expense of long-term decisions. And so we had to make these signposts based on these kind of patterns and revelations that we came, that kind of came out of this. And, um, and so my signpost is look to the, to the long game. And so it was all about what's the best choice for future tests, not for current tests, right? That's so good. And so, which is a hard choice sometimes to make because I live a block and a half away from Coneflower Creamery, the best ice cream place in Omaha, <laughs> farm to table. I can have make an excuse of supporting the local business and local farmers while eating the best ice cream you've ever ingested, right? <laughs> and so it isn't, it isn't easy for me. Uh, discipline is not easy for me, but I really felt um, with so much of what I have walked through recently that I just felt a call to almost overcorrect, to be having to be super disciplined. And so in the midst of all of this and working um, with my friend to try and figure out the root of this, I came to the word contemplation. And so in that, that, right, it's, um, and it came actually from an overrun Bible story, but a beautiful Bible story about Mary and Martha and how the active life versus the contemplative life. I had to read for my history class um, for grad school, um, this medieval um, Giordano, a um, medieval philosopher who talked about and used this illustration to compare and contrast the active life versus the contemplative life. And how in the church world, but in every world, right, we are, we're talking with coordinators and mentors and other people affiliated with teammates and, and our personal lives who are very active, right? It's good to do good things. Mm -hmm. It's good to spend your money to help other people and to, to bring joy to yourself, right? Um, but from, a, from a, a Christian lens that I view the world with, right, um, if I didn't have that, it would be easy to, to conflate those two, to say either one is good, right, to do a lot of things, right, or to be um, more well, more contemplative. But Jesus actually says that marriage was the better option, that to sit at the feet of Jesus, right, was better than to be doing lots of things for him. And so, and that's really hard for me because I like to do a lot of things. And so it was such an embodiment of what I wanted this to be, right? Is to choose to, instead of to do, to be, right? Um, to, to, to be with, to, to make, and part of that is to be very conscious of my decisions, my choices, my thoughts, my words. And so for everything I do, it's not crazy. Like before everything, I'm having posing this question, right? Mm -hmm. Do I need to do that? Like, what's the better option, right? Using that that phrase, that question. You're thinking. That ask. I'm thinking through. that, thinking through things, right? Taking a second, right? So I put extreme time limits on my phone, right? We talked about this a little bit earlier, where I only can do social media 20 minutes a day, which seems like a lot but it's very, very difficult to buy back, right? When it's easy just to go online or, you know, whatever it is to scroll, um, to scroll through things. And so to know and be conscious of that, part of the screen limit um, system that's now on iPhone is if you log into it after you've exceeded your screen time, there's a there's a question that pops up that says, you've um, exceeded your screen time, would you like to extend it for 15 minutes or would you like to have no limit for today? And just that simple pause before I make a decision helps me to say what's the best for the long game, right? I'm thinking to the, I'm shooting for the long game now. And so what does that look like? We just delivered it for you. 32. Very low for me as well. 34. Yep. Which is probably how they... 31, sorry, 31. Those with high deliberative probably think this way often. All the time, mm -hmm. right? And it has been very difficult to instill this in me, right? That I am very aware of how even some of my finances have turned around since the beginning of yeah. the year, how um, my eating habits have significantly turned around. I have come to Code Flower. I've been once um, to celebrate one of my friends leaving to go do Mission Work in Costa Rica for a while, right? Like it was a celebratory social thing um, that I chose to take part in willingly, not that I felt captive to it, right? right. Um, and so it's just been almost freeing, right? Which was the whole reason I came to it was that the choices, the immediate choices I was making were the times I found myself in desolation. And what happened was when I made a choice out of what I felt was freedom, I was then succumbed to bondage, 
right? Because I'm making a choice that I think is free, right? To have sugar. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden I'm bonded to sugar and I can't get out of it because I want more. And it's all I can think about. And you know, you, you end on that rabbit trail, right? right? But instead when I choose to totally submit myself, right? For me to my higher power of God and be obedient to the one thing, I'm never in bondage to anything else, right? And so there's power actually in submission, right? In obedience, in being disciplined, Mm -hmm. which has been the toughest lesson. And I have been nowhere near perfect and we are only a month and a week, five weeks in, you know. Oh, uh, I hear you. (laughs) And I think it's, um, what I love about the word contemplation is there's a, there is a hunger for that right now. Mm -hmm. If you look around at some of the things that our favorite podcasters are talking about Mm -hmm. some of the things that our world is talking about. Um, One of our our new friend, Joni, I distinctly can hear her saying, I'm not a human doing, I'm a human being. And that made me pause because I thought, wait, shouldn't we all be humans doing? Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, I don't spend enough time just being. So I um, just read an awesome article um, about the whole concept of uh, FOMO, of fear of missing out, and how driven that has been by social media because we're doing constant comparison, but also we're, that's my source of what's happening. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's high woo, high communication, high empathy, I want to know what's going on with people. And so it's not necessarily like for me a what's everybody doing but what 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 is everybody doing like the sense of i want to know you and what's happening because i feel a connection that way that's good but what this author was talking about and it's a um, eric barker it's barking up the wrong tree i get an email every week i love it and he gives you like very simple things to consider it was like seriously not just get off your phone but can you be silent can you be in silence? Yeah. Can you just be in the time that sparks creative thought? Mm, that's really good. So shutting the radio off, mm-hmm. shutting the podcast off, yeah. and just being in mm-hmm. creative thought time. I love that. Be- and so when you say contemplation, I thought creative thought, creative thought. Yeah. Um, so when we kind of figured out that we had this tie between our words, yet they are they they are very so different. Very different. Yeah. and come from very different places. Mm-hmm. I think it is absolutely phenomenal that just as far in to 2019, we've already had people reminding us mm-hmm. of our words yeah. without them having any idea what they are. <laughs> For Joni to come up and say, mm-hmm. I'm a human being, not a human doing, mm-hmm. is for me, the messages come all over the place. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of people are hungry for that. We have become a very human doing. Let's go, let's be, let's be doing all these things. Oh, Check sure. it off the list. And mm-hmm. for high achiever, I love that. Mm-hmm. But when I sit and I think about things and I just write things out, my, my goal this year is to have a journal that doesn't make any sense, mm-hmm. that is not color coded, does not follow a pattern, that I just write and write mm-hmm. and write and write and I don't correct myself so hard for me not to erase but I'll just cross out sometimes that's not what I meant you know or that's not the right spelling of that word I for me to misspell in my journal no, not acceptable so I'm trying to just let thoughts be present and for you have very high learner but I have high learner too it's almost sometimes I feel like I'm missing out on learning I should be experiencing if I skip that podcast or not so sure about that. And That's then good. That's a good word. And then I loved how this tied into, um, I listened to um, Maria Shriver in her in- interview in her new um, podcast, um, Hoda, who is her, um, uh, Maria often sits in on um, the NBC space and they okay. talk about great things and they're great friends. But they were talking about grief and what it means to just show up and Maria was talking about, you don't send a text that says, what can I do? You just show up. Mm-hmm. You don't send a text that says, or call and say, should I come? You just, just come. you just go. And um, having recently gone back home for um, 
a funeral of a family member. Well, she's like a family member to me, um, a family friend, and she was my one of my first piano teachers and dance teachers. And Janine was so full of life. I mean, but I started thinking about this whole concept of being present. And my friend Jeremy um, reached out and he sent me a text and said, "A good friend shows up to the funeral. A great friend shows up with their husband in tow." <laughs> and sticks around I hadn't that's just what I do yeah like I just want to want to be there but when I started thinking about Janine as a person this amazing woman farm wife busy involved always was present for us and she gave up her time and talent in a small community and said you know what maybe I'll teach some kids how to tap dance Maybe I'll teach some kids how to play piano. And I started thinking about, in my generation, are we doing that? Mm-hmm. Am I giving up my time and talent? I do my check-ins with my nephews and my niece, and I love those. That's been a focus for part of my award of the year. I do check-ins each week, um, sometimes FaceTime, sometimes just phone calls, and I say, tell me what was good this week. Mm-hmm. You know, the best and the silliest. Tell me something that made you laugh. And I love, love, love that now they're, like, thinking about it. Yes. So they know when Aunt Ella calls, they're like, oh, i got to tell her something. Um, I'm doing that. But am I really giving of my time and talent completely in a free way? Am I giving yeah. that? Um, not because I have to, mm-hmm. but because I, I, I have that ability. Yeah. So, and it's so different when it's coming from a place of freedom, right? Not of yes. obligation. And so that's something that I learned when... Um, when I really chose this word, I actually, um, obviously besides like work and, um, and like a, a few other things, but I stripped myself of anything that was obligatory. And I got through everything, right? I took out every automatic withdrawal that was associated with my account. I, you know, my bank accounts. I, everything that, and, and I really thought through each and every element, right? Like, I can't shirk my bills, right? Like, I have to pay rent. But there are things where I was like, okay, is that really something I want to do, right? Is that the best when I really think, when I really contemplate that choice? And so when I chose to add certain things back in, right, to reconnect my bank accounts or whatever it was, or to, um, you know, when I took aside all obligation or pretenses for what I think my time with God is supposed to be like or what my time with friends is supposed to be like, there's freedom in that, right? Because yes. it's not, you you shed expectations of if I'm giving myself, right, to an organization, to a um, community, whatever it is, I should be rewarded in some way, or I should be celebrated in some way, or I should get something back as a result of what I've given, right? But how limiting is that to really giving? I don't know that that's truly giving, no, right? No. And you have expectations of what you receive as a result of that, that isn't truly freely giving. Right. And so what does it look like, you know, for me in my, in my time with God, there's so much emphasis in my church of being in scripture. And so I had been and a color coding system. People think I'm going to color code everything now. I don't, I promise. Actually, I am thinking about color coding my books because I, because of the place we were at in D.C. and how cool that um, that little cafe was in our hotel. Um, but anyway, size, you know, total <laughs> sidebar. But um, one of the things I was doing was making sure that I got through a chunk of scripture every day. And it was like, if I don't do that, then there's condemnation, which is the exact opposite of what it says in scripture mm-hmm. about people those those you know, there's therefore not enough condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? In Romans. And, um, and so being able to, um, and, and I have this awesome, awesome spiritual director that has helped walk me through some of this stuff to say, why are, where did that come from? Where did you think, right, that, guilt. right, guilt, mm-hmm. um, expectation, um, the messages that I received from an awesome, awesome, well-meaning church, right, that that's what that time is supposed to look like. Um, so then I would just get angry and I wouldn't want to be in scripture. And so now, and it's almost like crazy how this has collided with my, you know, word of contemplation. Um, I haven't done my formal SEBI, right, in a long time. I've picked up a commentary in a long time. What I do with my time is contemplative prayer. Um, I've been doing prayer sets. And so instead of taking in something, I've been exfoliating something, right? Uh-huh. I've been getting rid of it. Um, which is all about being rather than doing, right? I'm not checking off my time with God, you know, well, got that obligation done for the day, right? Because now there's freedom in it, right? Even just in a pure concept of, of 
say, it's okay if I don't do that, right? Because that's an outside pressure that's been put on me. There has been a renewed freedom in encountering God in the way that I encounter God. Also, what a great gratitude that, practice. Right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's a great gratitude practice. Right? And so that's what I love about this is I just sit and ask and I think about what I need. So if I need love, if I need patience, um, if I need friendship, if I need solidarity, whatever I need, and I sit for 20 minutes in silence, right? Mm-hmm. And I think about that word, and that's the only thing I think about. And when my mind strikes, because it will, I just gently bring it back. And I say, this is what I'm thinking on right now in mm-hmm. this moment. And I have, there's like, it's an app, right? Okay, it's a Christian app. So this is what I love about even like speaking with you is that most people who might be Christian that are listening to this will be like, wait, what? Um, and um, and it, there's a gong at the beginning and at the end. Of the I time, was just right? going to say, is the app called Calm? Because no, so <laughs> my meditation um, app, Calm, yeah, that I utilize, yeah. that I learned from uh, Dr. Lynn here, mm-hmm. who did our self-care apps um, session for mentors um, in Drake County. I set it for the, my intention in time, which is 10 minutes in the morning. And at the end, there's a gong that brings me back. Brings you back right? yeah. And I usually, it gives me a word every day. So today's word is maybe. I love that. <laughs> and it has, it, the words have been really interesting. And some of the words are words I've never heard of that I have to look up. And then I really get into that Oh, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, and I'm also looking for it. Mm-hmm. And I think we are doing very similar things mm-hmm. in the way that we connect to our to our soul and our spirit and our higher power in very similar ways. Yeah. Yet at the same time, different. Yep. And just like we talked about on episode 33 of Jen and Emily. Acknowledging that difference is yeah. okay, and being yeah. able to talk about it, and yet find those things that are oh wait we do have that in common oh wait we do have that that, mm-hmm. that matches up that way. I think the fact that we both would choose a word of the year that has so much to do with stepping back and thinking about what matters. Yeah, and I, it's not like I'm either one of us would choose a word like. Um, razzmatazz or something like that <laughs> we're going to be thoughtful yeah. in the way that we choose our word be a good word for 2020 no. razzmatazz i keep a list on my phone surprise surprise of potential words oh my gosh. um of course you do <laughs> what i would like to know from our listeners is are you creating a word of the year yeah. are you creating an intention are you creating goals um i can't believe that we're just now talking about 2019 and, and new uh resolutions and intentions yeah. and those great things but what did you do this year Yep. What intentions did you set? And if you haven't yet, maybe contemplate yeah, the worth of a word mm-hmm. or a phrase love that. that honors you. Mm-hmm. Um, do you see what I did there? I love it. <laughs> I will contemplate the worth of a word that honors you. Oh, and then let us know. We'd love to hear what words you choose. And I think that um, there was a time probably um, – the third week of January where I'd kind of gotten off with being disciplined, right? And all I wanted to do was say, well, that's what 2020 is for, (laughs) right? It's all ice cream now. (laughs) Yeah, it's all ice cream every day. No, that would uh, break the bank as well. It would throw some right? (laughs) Right? Um, But uh, so I just want to encourage you, right, That, that and I just get so discouraged when I get off track. But there's been something in me in setting this intention where I have been, okay, if I get off track or if I do something, tomorrow's a brand new day, like a brand new, fresh day, right? And I get to start over and it's okay. And we have to grant ourselves some grace and forgiveness. We're really hard, as we talked about, on ourselves. Yeah. But I think if we truly want to model that, mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't want my mentee to walk around with... Yeah guilt and shame about the fact that she didn't stay focused on, you know, whatever that goal might be, that we all have days. But the sooner we get back to the next best choice, the better. So lingering in the muck of I screwed up Mm -hmm. is an absolute waste of time and energy. So, um, and the next best choice or the next good choice, um, I learned that language from Glennon Doyle. 
and I love her work. Um, she was just, they just did a podcast, uh, Glennon and Abby, with um, Krista Tippett. Yes, yes. And it was really good, but she was talking about just make the next good choice. Yeah. And that word has helped a lot with my word of the year. Contemplating choices for me is a lot about worth. So it, it's all up to choice and balance. And I have a friend who just started um, detox, you know, doing the 10 days of no sugar. And if you've lived on sugar and you try to do 10 days, I mean, you know, I did 21, but you try to do 10 or you try to make a big change, it is hard. Oh, yeah. So if you have a friend or that's you or whoever that person is in your life, high five them. Because it is really hard, and they need encouragement to make the next good choice. Okay, so to come full circle, here's this quote from Harry Potter from Dumbledore. And Harry, it's in the very first, um, in the second uh, uh, second movie, second book, Chamber of Secrets, where he is contemplating if he was sorted into the right house, because there's this more house that's a little more evil, it's more associated with people like Professor Snape, that he was sorted into a good house, even though the sorting hat was telling him that he would do great in this other house. That was a little more evil. And so he comes to the headmaster, Dumbledore, and he said, the sorting hat only put me in Gryffindor, said Harry in a defeated voice, because I asked not to go into Slytherin. Exactly, Dumbledore said, beaming once more. Which makes you very different from Tom Riddle, who is the um, antagonist of the entire series. It's our choices, Harry, that show us what we truly are, far more than our abilities. So I love that. I should have that up to go full circle. Um, so we just want to thank you for joining us um, on this episode 34 of Jen and Millie. We'd love to hear what your intentions are or have been, res resolutions um, have been or are for this new year um, and how you're doing with that. And we want to encourage you that if you feel like you've gotten a little bit off track now that we're um, over a month in to the new year, we want to encourage you to start fresh tomorrow. What's that next best choice? Because it's the choices that really make us who we are. Uh, so we're, uh, we're new to this format, as you guys know. So continue to share the word about the Jen and Millie podcast. Um, rate us, review us, um, and interact with us. We'd love to, to hear what you think about this episode um, and all the episodes to come. Um, one of the best ways to do that is to follow us on Instagram at Jen and Millie. That's at G-E-N-N-A-N-D-M-I-L-L-I-E. Until next time. <laughs>